Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the first module of our deep learning course and in this first module we are discussing about the basics of deep learning. The previous videos of this module was about what is meant by a perceptron and what are all the mathematical aspects of a perceptron. And in this video, let's try to build a sigmoid perceptron from scratch in Python based on the understanding that we have so far. So this will be the agenda for today's video and let's get started. So first of all, I'll just give you a quick recap of what we have seen. And once this is clear, we can quickly move on to the Python code where we can like build this perceptron model from scratch. Okay. So this we have already discussed when it comes to a perceptron, it contains a new uh, an input vector and a weight vector. So this input vector is nothing but the input features that we would have in a data set. And this weight vector is the weightage of those, uh, you know, individual input weights. So W1 represents the weightage of X1 and W2 represents the weightage of X2 and so on right and then you have a bias factor that we add to this weighted sum so this input uh, features are in the form of a vector and weights are also in the form of a vector whereas bias is a scalar which is a you know single numerical value okay and then you have the summation function where you take the product of the weight and the corresponding input features similarly here we have w2 and x2 and you have like wn into xn and to this sum you add this bias so this is called as the summation and once you have this summation you apply a activation function to it so you have different activation functions like sign step etc but here we are going to build a perceptron with sigmoid activation function for which the formula is 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus z so this is the uh, activation function sigmoid activation function formula and this is what we will build and uh, what happens in the process is that first we have this data as uh, you know vx which is our input features now we randomly initiate these uh, you know weight vectors and bias value and once we have this we try to make a prediction out of this based on the initial weight and bias value that we have uh, initialized and now it would give you a prediction and that prediction will be compared to your true output and then we kind of do the gradient descent step where we try to minimize the loss function at each step okay so the first step is like uh, randomly initiating weight and bias and keep on updating these parameters based on your loss value so that is like uh, the very high level overview of this and this is uh, the formula for uh, you know calculating your uh, gradients and uh, and you know updating the weights so we know that gradient descent is an optimization algorithm used for minimizing the loss function in various machine learning algorithms and it is used for updating the parameters of the learning model so this also we have discussed in the previous video and this is the formula to update your weights so w is equal to w minus l into dw where this l is our uh, learning rate so this w is the previous weight that we had and this w is the updated weight that we are going to have and similarly bias also b is equal to b minus l into db now this dw and db are called as my gradients so this is what we mention as gradients and this is nothing but dw is partial derivative of loss function with respect to w and this db is the partial derivative of loss function with respect to b so basically we differentiate loss function in terms of weight to get this dw and we uh, you know uh, uh, like differentiate loss in terms of bias to get this db so these are like partial derivatives and the chain rule will be applied to it so let's not go into the details of how we can get this dw and db but i'm sure there will be like so much content or materials you can search online but this is the overall concept so this is what we need to build our perceptron model and let's get started so i'll just open my uh, google collab now okay so here i have this uh, google collab open and i've named this as perceptron from scratch so let me connect my system here so the library that we are going to need here is just the numpy library so i'll import numpy as np so i'll just try to see if i can zoom it a bit i hope this is clearly visible okay so i'll run this my system is connected now we are going to create a perceptron object so let's build this perceptron class okay so this is nothing but a sigmoid perceptron so we are going to create a, a object and for that we will be using the keyword class so class let me call this as sigmoid perceptron yeah now 
So within this class, we know that we kind of create several functions. So we have seen this a lot while, uh, you know, we were building models from scratch in our machine learning course. So if you are not aware of, about that, I'll just uh, give a video link in this description. Maybe you can like watch that particular playlist where we have built models like logistic regression, SPM, etc. from scratch. Okay. So now you have this object called a sigmoid perceptron and within this objects we need to create functions so you, you can also call this as methods let's call this as function so we have like a set of functions that we need to create i'll also explain like why we are creating these functions and the purpose of those things once i'm done with this so first function that i'm going to create is init so you have double underscore init and again double underscore okay so this is like a standard uh, function that we have and now the next function is my sigmoid okay then let me create my predict function and next will be fit function and finally we would have this evaluate so these are all the functions that you would have in a sklearn models as model as well again you also have uh, like sklearn's perceptron but this code is like a bit simpler than that so i'm assuming that it won't use a sigmoid activation function so it should be using step or sign activation function but let's use sigmoid so finally you have this evaluate where we can pass this uh, training sorry training data and labels so you can pass your data points and your labels and this will give you the accuracy of your model so we have like these things so these are all the five functions uh, that we need and the other thing yeah i forgot to mention this so here we will be using a stochastic gradient descent kind of an optimization algorithm where you update the weights and bias after uh, training with each data point. So previously when we use this gradient descent, it's like you, uh, you know, predict the labels of the entire batch of the entire data. So you find the cost function and then you kind of update the weights. But in the case of stochastic gradient descent, we can update the weights after, you know, training with like each individual data points. So that is what we'll be using in this perceptron. Yeah. Now let me go back to this. Now let's try to understand like what is this innate sigmoid uh, predict fit evaluate and these things. So innate function, we need this to initiate weights. Okay, so sorry, not initiate weights, to initiate the parameters. So here the parameters will be the weights and bias. So this is like, this is not like uh, particular to machine learning functions, I would say. So this is like for class and objects in general. So in this init function, so this would be the first function in majority of the class. So this is where we uh, initiate the parameters. Okay, and then you have the sigmoid. So this sigmoid function we have is to give this sigmoid formula which is this 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus z right and predict so what will predict do is it will find the weighted sum and it will call this sigmoid uh, function so it's basically to get this output so when you call this uh, predict function so it will do this uh, product of weight and the corresponding input features and it will add the bias and then it will uh, call this sigmoid function that we have just now created and then it will uh, you know give the output so that is the purpose of this predict function and then you have this fit so this is where the update of weights and uh, update of bias happens so this is where we actually use a gradient stochastic gradient descent algorithm and finally this evaluate is a simple thing which we kind of use in order to uh, find the accuracy of the model so these are all the functions that we have so i hope everyone is clear as of now now i'll mention uh, a parameter so and the other thing is self should be the first parameter in all these functions so i'll just create this self yeah and then you have this evaluate okay so self is like would be the first parameter it's nothing but when you call this class of sigmoid perceptron or when you initiate it so that will be taking this self parameter so let me show you so what we would do is once this code is done let's say we would create something called as uh, some variable called as model and i would say sigmoid perceptron which is the class that we are creating now i've called it right so i will like call something like this and then i would say model dot fit so this is how we would work and this is how we would have worked in other models in sklearn as well so this self is nothing but it takes the values of this model and we kind of mention this function with self dot sigmoid so let's say that we are calling this sigmoid function within this predict function so what i would do is i will call this as self dot uh, sigmoid and then i'll pass this like weighted sum which is z 
right so whenever you are calling uh, the functions of this class with an other function you can like use this self and when you are like mentioning the parameters like weights and bias you would mention as self dot weights and so on so that is the idea so it's basically nothing but the variable or you know the form in which you are initiating or instantiating that particular class so that's the concept of this again if you have more doubts uh, like it, it's not that complex you can like look it up as well but i hope everyone is clear so far so the next parameter that we have is input underscore size okay so input size so input size is nothing but to understand or to know how many data points are there okay so for that purpose we have this uh, input size and then uh, sorry i missed one thing so here we add this input size right so this input size is actually not the number of data points but it's basically the shape of your data so it's it's like the number of input features that you have or you can think about this as the number of columns that you have in your data set and here i'm going to say weights self dot weights is equal to np dot random dot r a n d n okay so here i would say input size okay so let's try to understand this so i have also told you previously that this weights are nothing but the weight of this input features right and also i have mentioned multiple times that the number of weights that you have in a model is equal to the number of input features that you have and this is like uh, you know pretty obvious right because you need you have number of let's say 10 features and you need like 10 uh, weightage for this right so each weightage for each input feature so the number of weights is equal to the number of input features that you have in this case you have n input features so you have like n number of weights so in this case we don't know how many columns or how many input features are data set would have so we can like kind of give it here so here while the user is calling a sigmoid perceptron they can mention like what's the shape of this data or what's the number of columns of this data and the model will like do the rest so it will initiate a weight array or a weight vector which contains the same number of values as the number of columns in your data so that's the idea and then i'll call this self dot bias okay so the self dot bias is equal to np dot random dot random okay yeah so this here we are giving this as one because we know that bias is a single scalar value right so we say this as one so if you in, let's say the data has five input features or five columns here the value will be five so it will create an array that is like five values here it is one so it's it's basically kind of generate like a single value so that's the idea so these are the two parameters that we are initiating so this input size should be given by the user while calling the sigmoid perceptron so we have we add this right where we have this uh, model is equal to sigmoid perceptron so that we would mention the input size so that's the idea and based on that input size so your weights will be uh, initiated and then you have like one bias value so this is about it now let's come to this sigmoid function so we know that we apply the sigmoid function to the weighted sum which is z so i'll call this as z and here i can say return one divided by one plus np dot exp minus z okay so this is the sigmoid function so this is the actual output that you are sending from the model so you have a z which we will be calculating in this predict function so z is uh, that w1 into x1 w2 into x2 that we have so this will be uh, deduced in the predict function and we pass the z to this uh, uh, sigmoid activation function which we have created as def sigmoid so we have self and z which is where z is the weighted sum so we are passing it here and you have returned one divided by one plus np dot exp is nothing but that e right so and then you have this minus z which is my weight z is my weighted sum and the formula is like minus uh, weighted sum you can like see it here so that's why we have this so this is the sigmoid function now let's try to build this weighted sum okay and here to predict it you need to give the input values so i'll call this as you know inputs and this should be let's call this as weighted sum so weighted sum is equal to np dot dot so we are kind of calculating the dot product of inputs self dot weights 
so this may be a bit confusing for some people but yeah it's not that complex i'll like explain it to you in a simple way so here we are finding the dot product of a vector so when you find a dot product of a vector it is a scalar right so you would get a numerical value so if you you know multiply or or if you do a cross product you won't get a scalar value but for a dot product you would get like a scalar value so what happens is here we have two vectors right so input will be in the form of a vector and weight will also be in the form of a vector so let's say that the input is something like let's say uh, you know or let me put this yeah input is let's say 10 and then you have this 25 and then you have this 50 so these are the input array and then you have a weight array that is like 0 0.5 and 0 0.9 and maybe 0 0.1 so these are all the in weight weights that you are so you basically have two vectors here so this is my input vector and this is my weights vector so when you call this np dot dot so it, which is a dot product of two vectors so what happens is it will multiply this 10 with 0 0.5 so you would get something like uh, you know 10 into 0 0.5 this plus uh 25 into 0 0.9 and then you would plus you would also get uh 50 into 0 0.1 right so when you find the you know value of this this is a scalar so this is what happens here which is nothing but our requirement right so we need to multiply the weight with its corresponding input feature and then later we add this by us so this is how we find this weighted sum by using this np dot dot which is the dot product of these two vectors which is my inputs and my self dot weights and finally we add the self dot bias as b so here we would add this b so let's say that the b is generated as 0 0.3 you know let's say 5 6 or something so to this we would add this bias so that's why we are using this np dot dot which is the dot product so here we have this weighted sum so np dot dot inputs and your self dot weights and then you have the self dot bias so this inputs we need to pass it while calling the predict function okay so here we have this weighted sum now we call this sigmoid so let's say return self dot sigmoid weighted sum so if you see as i said here we are calling the sigmoid function so we are using the self dot sigmoid function so this is an interesting thing so first step we are calculating the weighted sum and then we are calling the sigmoid function which, which would give me the output which is this value return 1 divided by 1 plus np dot exp so what happens is you have a weight that is randomly generated and you have a bias that is randomly generated so these are your first set of parameters to this you pass the input and it will calculate the weighted sum and then it will call the sigmoid function which would give us this output so basically this function gets the input and then it returns the output which is the sigmoid value right so yeah this is how we can get the output of this so here we can see the sigmoid function is called internally to give the output so we know that when you use a sigmoid function the value is always going to stay between 0 and 1 so no matter like how large how positively large the value is or how large negatively a value is right so you will always get a value between 0 to 1 which is something some kind of a probability okay now we have this fit function where we would optimize this model optimize in the sense where we update the weights so that we get the most optimized weights so when i say optimized weights that means when you use that particular weight and that that particular bias you are going to get the best accuracy or the lowest loss value okay so here you have a weight and bias value that is randomly generated so of course this is not going to give you good performances good accuracies now we start with a random weight value and bias value and we keep on updating it through several number of iterations and update this weight and bias until we reach a point where the accuracy cannot go further up or we can't reduce a loss value beyond this so this is the point of this so that we will do in this fit function so here uh, again this is similar to the fit function that we would have in sklearn right so we you would have used logistic regression or linear regression and we you would have called this model dot fit where we we would pass this x train and x test right so that's what happens here so let me say inputs targets targets is nothing but my labels 
and I have this learning rate. So we have seen this right in the gradient descent formula as well. So we have this EL which is the learning rate. Learning rate is nothing but how much change you want to give to your weight and bias or your parameters at each iteration. So do you want to change the values by 0.1 or you want to change your values at each iteration by 0.001. So that value. And then you have number of epochs. So you can call this as epochs or you can call this as number of iterations. Right. So if it's like 100 that means your... Uh, model will kind of try to change the weight under weight and bias under times and and it will like try to uh, you know find the loss function for that weight and bias combination and see whether it, it's kind of giving you a good value so that's the concept and here i'll say number of examples is equal to inputs dot shape so this number of examples is nothing but the number of data points that we have i'll tell you why we need this here I'm going to say for um, epoch in range number of epochs and then again I have a for loop which says for i in range number of examples okay so this for loop runs for number of epochs let's say the number of epochs that you have is 100 so you can or the iteration so you can also have like thousand iterations right now this for loop runs for that many times let's say the number of epochs is 100 so this for loop runs for 100 times and this number of examples is nothing but the number of data points that you have and if you remember in the start of this video i said that we are going to use some kind of a stochastic gradient descent where we will update the weights and parameters while training for each individual data points and if you are using a, a normal gradient descent you would you won't have this for loop here right so you would have this for loop of course which is the number of iterations so you have 100 uh, epochs and once this epoch is completed that means once uh, let's say the number of data points that you have in this data set is let's say 1000 okay and the number of epochs that you have is let's say 100 so when you use a normal gradient descent or a standard gradient descent your model will run like thousand times in this particular for loop and at each epoch we will predict the output for all these thousand data points okay so you have 100 epochs and it uh, it has like thousand data points so it will try to use that initial weight and bias and it will make the prediction for this thousand data points and this and then you have this output right that is given by the model so you compare it with the true labels which is your target so you know you see that the loss or basically we have to call this as the cost function so you see the cost function and this this value is higher and now the optimization uh, function will try to change your weights and bias so this is how it happens so the uh, bottom line here is at each epoch the model predicts the target for all the data points which is thousand in this case and it changes the weight value and bias value but when you use a stochastic gradient descent at each epoch we have another for loop that iterates over each individual data points so it will take one particular data point and it will try to predict it predict the label for the data point and compares that data points uh, you know true label so you now you have a true label and a predicted label for one data point now it sees that the loss function value is higher now it will change the weight value and the bias value so it basically changes your parameter values so the main difference is that for a normal gradient descent you change weight and bias like at each epoch or at each iteration when you made the prediction prediction for all the data points in the data set but in the case of stochastic gradient descent this weight and bias is updated when the model is trained for each individual data point so that is the basic idea so in your standard gradient descent here you would have this gradient uh, descent algorithm that is running but in the case of stochastic gradient descent it kind of happens here inside this particular for loop so that's the idea okay so i hope everyone is clear with this so yeah this may be a, a bit confusing but yeah maybe i'll try to give a quick explanation in the end so that like you are clear with this okay so this is the concept so at each epoch you are uh, running it again for each individual data points right now i would say input vector is equal to input 
i okay and now you have target is equal to targets of i and then you have this prediction is equal to self dot predict so here we call this predict function that we have created above and if you see it takes like this inputs as the input parameter right so this inputs is nothing but this input vector so we have to say input vector yeah mm. Then finally you have this error. So this error is nothing but the difference between your target and your prediction. Okay. Now we have to update the weights here. I'll also explain you what we are trying to do in these lines once I'm done with this code. So here we are going to update weights. Gradient weights so is equal to error into prediction 1 minus prediction into input vector okay and now let's say self dot weights plus is equal to learning rate gradient weights and then you have this update bias gradient bias is equal to error into prediction into 1 minus prediction self dot bias is equal to learning rate into median bias okay so this is it let's try to understand this so this is the part where we are updating the weight and bias value now this gradient weight is nothing but so in the initial part i mentioned right so that you have a gradient so you have this dw so this is that dw and this gradient bias is your db so this gradient weight or dw is nothing but the partial derivative of your loss function with respect to your weight and this gradient bias is your partial derivative of your loss function with respect to your bias right and when you do the differentiation it's like a complex step and you finally end up with this particular formula so i'm direct i'm like directly using it maybe you can also kind of uh, understand like how we get this particular formula but let's not go detail into this so i'll just tell you this one thing so we get this as the final uh, deduction after uh, differentiating your loss function with respect to weights and this you get after differentiating your uh, loss function with respect to your bias now this is updating your weight and bias right so here the plus or minus doesn't mean a different thing because like this plus or minus you will automatically get from this gradient so you don't have to worry about this plus sign that you have in the formula of updating the weight so it doesn't mean much right so it can be anything now you have this gradient weights and then you have this yeah this is where we are creating this gradient and in the formula if you remember we would have like w is equal to w minus learning rate into gradient so that's what i have here so weight is equal to weight plus learning rate into gradient weight so similarly here we have bias is equal to bias plus learning rate into gradient bias right so this is the part where the bias is updated in uh, where we also include this learning rate so as i said learning rate is what is the magnitude by which the parameter the bias should change or the weight sh should change now let's try to understand this code completely so we have a for loop that takes this number of epochs it basically runs for the times equals to the number of epochs and then you iterate this through each data point that you have as I said, if you are using a standard gradient descent, so this would have came in this particular for loop, in this epochs for loop. As this is a stochastic gradient descent, we have this here. So here we have this for i in range number of examples. So number of examples is 
each like the basically the total number of data points and at each step we take like one data point so inputs of five this inputs is nothing but as i said your input uh, features input values so let's say that you have a data set that has five columns and 100 rows right so this 100 rows with five columns will be passed in this inputs okay this targets is the corresponding labels for this 100 data points and this learning rate and number of epochs are like hyper parameters so we can like kind of give any numbers there it, it's kind of up to us so learning rate can be 0.1 or it can be 0.001 number of epochs can be 100 or it can be 1000 and so on so we take like this each individual input so you have this 100 rows here with five columns now we take that first row alone so when you call this inputs of i when this follow prints for the first time it will take that one row that has five values and that will be my input vector and similarly i'll take that corresponding labels as target is equal to targets of i this targets is this and from this i'm taking like only one uh, target value or one label value so this is the true label i need this to compare it with the prediction made by my model so this is the prediction made by my model which is prediction is equal to self dot predict input vector and also the main thing is this is a binary classification problem so we have also discussed previously that the sigmoid neuron or a perceptron can be used for binary classification so the output that you get will be 0 or 1 right so here we have this prediction as self dot predict input vector but here the output is not either a 0 or 1 okay so the value lies between between 0 and 1 okay so it can be 0.5 it can be 0.85 or something so this is not like a binary output because we pass this through the sigmoid function so i am calling this predict function here so i am calling this predict input vector so i am passing the input vector and calling the predict function so what happens is this five values are there right now you already would have like five weight uh, you know weight vector with five values so that we multiply with this input we add this to a bias so this can be any number this can this value can be 1000 this value can be like 10000 or something now we pass this value through this sigmoid function and then you get this particular uh, value out of this particular function or a formula which would lie between 0 and 1 so that is my prediction now i find the difference between this target and my prediction so the difference basically the difference between my true label and my uh, predicted label okay and based on this error so we update our uh, weights and bias using this gradient so this is the idea so you pass the entire training data to it and you set a number of epochs to that and you also mention the learning rate and it runs for those many times so it uh, let's say it runs for 100 uh, or let's say it runs for 1000 epochs and it has like 100 data points so while kind of predicting the value for each of these 100 data points it will try to update the weights and bias based on the error that it is receiving error again is nothing but the difference between your you know true and predicted okay and yeah so this is about this fit function so this kind of this is like uh, happens like several times as we gave this in a for loop right so let's say we have uh, 100 data points and 1000 epochs so at each epoch it will run like let's say 1000 times because we have 1000 data points so that is what happens so it's basically like Uh, several number of times this for loop runs so this is what happens in this fit function at the end of this you would have the optimized uh, you know weight value and bias value when i say optimized again it it kind of produces the least error okay and then you have this evaluate so here i'll say again you can like use a different type of evaluation formula as well it doesn't matter because this is like a simple code i'll use this one so correct is equal to 0 so this is i'm just using uh, this correct as a counter to find how many correct values my model is predicting so i'm going to say for input vectors sorry input vector comma target in zip inputs comma targets yeah prediction is equal to self dot predict so this evaluate should be called after this fit function because in this fit function it runs for several times and you have the optimum weights and bias and then only you have to evaluate it right because after this fit has run then only you have the final weight value and the bias value okay so self dot predict input vector so i'll explain you what we are doing in these set of codes yeah here we should give this 
inputs and targets okay prediction is equal to input vector if this prediction is greater than or equal to 0 0.5 we are going to call that predicted class as 1 else you will call this predicted class as 0 okay now we are going to have another if condition saying that if this predicted class is equal to the target now I am going to say correct plus 1 so we are like incrementing the counter and finally we can say accuracy is equal to correct divided by length of inputs and finally you can return your accuracy okay so this is the idea so let's start from this accuracy formula so we know that the formula for accuracy is let me put this here accuracy is equal to number of correct predictions divided by total number of data points okay so let's say that you have 100 data points so that this will be that value and the number of correct predictions that you made is 50 so accuracy will be by will be 50 divided by 100 okay which is 0 0.50 so it's 50 percentage accurate so if you give it like 10 data points it would correctly predict by 5 data points so that is the accuracy formula so for that we need the total number of inputs and the total number of correct predictions so now let's try to understand this code so while uh, having this evaluate function you are passing this input values and your target values so this is just like your uh, you know predict function that we have like so we uh, or again evaluate function in your sklearns models where you call this model dot evaluate and you would pass your x test and your y test x test is nothing but your input features for your test data and y test is nothing but the corresponding labels of your uh, test data now we have this correct is equal to zero now for input vector and target and zip of inputs targets let's try to understand this code this may be a bit different for you so when i say for uh, you know i in or let's call this for val in um, 10 20 30 right or i can like put this list in a separate thing maybe i'll show this in to you in a separate cell okay so here let's say that we have a list and i'll call this as list one is equal to this okay so this list has three values so when i say for val in list one we know that and i can just say print of val right so let me run this so it prints 10 20 and 30 now let's say i have another list so it basically iterates over this particular list now i have another list which is called as list 2 and it has values like 0 0.2 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 now i can say for val 1 comma val 2 in zip of list 1 and list 2 and here i'm going to print val 1 and val 2 let's see what happens here okay so there it should be a comma right now this iterates through two of this list so previously when i say for val in list one at each step it would iterate through these two lists but now i want to iterate this from two lists so first you have list one and list two for let's say when the follow prints for the first time val one will take the first value of list one which is 10 
and this val2 will take the first value of this list 2 which is 0 0.2 okay the next time it will so that is what is like printed here so now we are printing val1 and val2 so we are we are printing this the second time it runs val1 takes the value as 20 and val2 takes the value as 0 0.3 that will be printed here so here i am basically iterating my for loop through two list so that is why this zip is basically used so it kind of creates a combined iterator so that's the purpose of this and that's what like we have here so i want to iterate this through this inputs and targets so the first time the for loop runs it will take the first data point in this array and the corresponding first target value or the label value okay now once i have this this input vector is this that uh, you know input features of that first data point or the first row and the target is the label for that first row values and I'm calling this predict function. So predict function and I'm passing this input vector which is stored in this variable called as prediction. So we know that when we call this predict it will call this predict function and then you have this optimized weights and optimized bias because we have already run this fit function and then it calls a sigmoid and you have the output right. So that output will be fed here right and as i said when you put something through a sigmoid function you have the value between 0, 0 to 1 and if this value is greater than or equal to 0 0.5 we are going to say that the class is 1 if the value is less than 0 0.5 then it goes to through this else condition and it will give the predicted class as 0 right so basically when your sigmoid output is equal to or greater than 0 0.5 you have the class as 1 if it's like e uh, less than 0 0.5 you, you would have the class as 0 now you have 1 or 0 as your predicted class. We compare it with our true label which is our target. Let's say for the first data point the true label is 1 okay and our sigmoid prediction the sigmoid output gives the value as 0 0.8. Now it's check this it's greater than 0 0.5 so it, it gives this predicted class is equal to 1. So that will be compared here if this predicted class is equal to my target where target is my actual label right if that's the case it will add one to this correct counter it's, it's basically to find the number of correct predictions the model is making if not it won't add this okay for wrongly classified data points what happens is this if condition won't be satisfied so you won't add one to this correct counter so that's what happens so let's say that you have uh, 100 data points so when you run this for loop it runs for 100 times and each time it will take one input value and the corresponding target value for all those 100 times it will check whether the model has made the correct prediction so all these are within this for loop so all these 100 times so the this will this if condition check if the model has made the correct predictions or a wrong prediction and now you finally have this correct uh, number of predictions made by the model and then you finally pass this through the accuracy uh, uh, formula and you get the accuracy value so this is how it works so this is how the evaluate function works which is once the model is trained you can call this model dot evaluate and pass in your maybe x train sorry you can pass in your x test and your y test and that would give you your test accuracy okay so this is all about the predict function that we have and i hope everyone is clear with this um, what we will do in the next video is we i mean let's take this class and let's take a sample data set and let's try to uh, train this model and trying to find how this model is performing so again it won't be having a very large accuracy as this is a fairly simpler model so we, again we can't expect much on the accuracy side but let's try to see how all these things comes together and how we can train this model with that particular data and before ending i'll just give you a quick recap of what we have done in this code so first we are creating a sigmoid perceptron class and we have like five functions first is the init function that initiates the parameters which are my weights and bias and then you have the sigmoid function which is to uh, calculate this sigmoid output from your weighted sum which is z and then you have this predict function which calculates the weighted sum from your as a product of your inputs and weights and it do the summation and adds the bias and then it passes that through the sigmoid function so you predict will basically give you the weighted sum and the sigmoid output of that weighted sum so basically you have like one output value fit is the most important function where we kind of pass this data training data so yeah that's very important i forgot to mention that so in fit we pass the training data so from this training data the model uh, kind of tries to learn 
uh, how to update the weight, weights and bias so you know how many times you have to update the weights and bias so it will like settle for the most optimum weights and bias and then finally you have this evaluate function that do the prediction so here we are like randomly initiating the weights with this np dot random dot random so input size so input size size as i said is the number of features or the number of columns that you have in your data set because the number of weights should be equal to your number of features and bias is a single value and then this is the sigmoid formula that we are applying again this is predict we have discussed so input parameters input uh, sorry training data input features training data labels these two are hyper parameters this we can set learning rate and number of epochs let's say learning rate can be 0 0.1 and number of epochs can be 100 so from this we are taking like how many input data points are there like this is the number of rows okay because these many times the model has to update the weights so at each epoch it will uh, kind of again iterate through the number of data points and number of examples that you have and at each step it will try to update the weight okay so that's what is happening here and it will like try to make the prediction that is stored in this prediction and the error will be calculated and based on that we find the gradients and we update the weights and bias respectively and finally you have this evaluate function which tries to check whether the model is making correct predictions or not so i hope everyone is clear uh, with this code and as i said in the next video let's try to put this perceptron class into action and see how it is performing so that's it from my side and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching